Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today is Friday, February 14th, which means it's Valentine's Day. So if you are celebrating, happy Valentine's Day to you. And if you aren't sending love to you anyway, because the world could always use a little bit more love all the time, everywhere, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I made this faux fur turtleneck sweater. It's super cozy, super warm, it's very wintry, and I added a little bit of personality by including this, this cutout in one of the sleeves. Um, whenever it comes to making garments for myself, I tend to stick to basic shapes most of the time and really clean lines, but I do always like to incorporate some element of fun or personality because what's the point of making something for yourself that you can already buy somewhere else, right? So I've never seen a sweater like this in the retail space, a faux fur sweater with a cutout in the sleeve. Especially when it comes to menswear, you don't often see garments like this with fur, with cutouts, show skin. So I like being able to do that for myself. And I would say it's, it's unisex. I mean, I do have broad shoulders, but if you are someone with narrow, narrower, you are someone with narrower shoulders, but if you are someone with narrower shoulders, <clears throat> but if you are someone with, you are someone with narrower shoulders. You'll, it'll just be a dropped shoulder and still be really cute and slouchy. I do also want to add that I incorporated some volume in the sleeve. This is technically called a bishop sleeve. So for all of you people out there that don't know the term for this type of sleeve where it gathers at the cuff and billows, it's called a bishop sleeve. You're welcome. So without any further ado, Stay tuned and check out how I made the sweater. When I first started cutting out the fabric, what I did was I took an existing pattern that I already had, and I knew that I wanted the sweater to be a little bit bigger and looser than the current pattern and fit um, that the pattern was made for. So I added an inch on each side of the side seams. So that's one inch on the left, right, front, and back. So for a total of four inches extra space, and then I cut them out. I knew that I wanted to make a voluminous bishop sleeve, but not too voluminous because the fur is really thick and it would be really hard to sew that sleeve into the cuff. So what I did was I flared the sleeve out on each side about two to three inches, and then I curved the hem of the sleeve down towards the back half of the sleeve to allow for that billowing motion. I also quickly cut out the cuffs and the neck part for the turtleneck. Now here I am just laying out all my pattern pieces, my cut fabric pieces, I should say. There's the back, there's one sleeve, oh, there's the front, there's that sleeve again, and there's that second sleeve. There's the neck for the turtleneck, and the two cuffs as well. Note to self, blend contour and shave sideburns. At this point while I was laying out the sleeve, I decided to add a little bit of pizzazz and personality. So I cut the sleeve up, I basically folded it in half, marked where I wanted to cut, and I cut a squiggly line across the top half of the sleeve, the side that has the sleeve cap, not the bottom half of the sleeve. So my goal here was to replace the top half of the sleeve, the sleeve cap, with this nude illusion tool. Now because I'm going to be replacing the, the top portion of the sleeve, I need to take into account the fact that there is no seam allowance within that seam that I just cut through that sleeve. So on my new piece of fabric, which is this nude illusion tool, I need to take into account the seam allowance for both sides of my sleeve pieces. The sleeve will be surged at a quarter inch seam allowance, so a quarter inch times two equals half an inch. So as I'm cutting out the new sleeve cap out of this nude illusion tool, I am adding a half inch seam allowance to the bottom part of that sleeve.
and I'm just using the existing sleeve cap as my pattern for the nude illusion. And this is where I'm adding that half inch seam allowance. I really do need to blend that contour and get rid of that sideburn. When it comes to sewing a curved or squiggly seam in a garment, it's really important that you notch your two pieces of fabric that will be sewn together. If not, you're going to have a hard time sewing those two pieces of fabric together. I guarantee it 100%. So I made sure that when I cut my notch on my tool, I lined up the white fur right below the tool and I notched directly below where I notched on the tool. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be serging this squiggly seam using a quarter inch seam allowance, but before I go over to the serger, I baste it in place first because that just makes it much easier to handle when I'm serging tool to fur. Here is where those notches will come in handy as you're sewing the two pieces together. Without those notches, you're going to have a really difficult time making sure those fabric pieces match up. Here I'm just taking a seam ripper to pull out the little pieces of fur that got stuck down in that seam. And to make sure that my seam allowance doesn't show through on the nude side of my sleeve, I'm using my machine just to edge stitch that seam allowance down. Using nude thread, I serge the nude portion of my sleeve first, and then I switch over to white and I serge the rest of my sleeve down, as well as the rest of the garment. When it comes to working with knit fabrics or fabrics that stretch, the best way to sew your garment together is with a serger with at least four threads. That way you have a really secure stitch. Also, the serge stitch allows for stretchy fabrics to stretch. When you sew a stretched fabric together using a straight stitch machine, what happens is once that fabric stretches, the stitches break. And if you've ever done this, you'll know from experience. So always use a serger when you're working with knit or stretch fabrics. Now what I'm doing here is I'm taking my cuffs that I just serged and I'm basting the two raw edges together to form the cuff. After I had formed my cuffs, I took the sleeve openings, which at this point were now a little bit bigger because I flared them out to allow for the billowing of the bishop sleeve, and then I basted them to the cuffs. What I'm doing here now is I'm edge stitching the armhole on the side where I've got that nude illusion so the seam allowance doesn't show through on the nude part of my sleeve. When I was serging the original fur neck for this sweater, I realized it was going to be really thick in that seam around the neck, which wouldn't allow it to stretch over my head comfortably, so I decided to recut the neck in just a simple ivory jersey. 
So I formed the neck of my sweater, folded it in half, and I basted the two raw edges together. Then once that was done, I attached it to the neck opening of the first sweater by basting it first, and then I went over to the serger to secure it. Once these steps were done, I quickly did the hem with a 2 inch top stitch and I was ready to go. Yes, jumping! Look at that height! Twirl! Mm -hmm. Ooh, yes! Nude illusion sleeve. Uh huh. Show off your tattoo if you have one. If not, it offers great ventilation if you've got really sweaty pits. Yes, show some side angle. Yes, bishop sleeve. Look at that billowing fullness. Both sides. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you've liked what you've seen and all the videos I've been showing you. Please don't forget to give me a thumbs up, comment below, share, subscribe, and ring that notification bell so that you know when all my videos go up. Thanks for watching!